nobody actually talks about what do you actually do if you don't do as well as you'd hoped. So there's a three step process to studying for the UCAT. It does not dictate how well you're going to do in medical school or how good of a doctor you're going to be. everybody welcome back to my channel so if you're new here my name is Amelia and I'm a first year medical student this is my applying to medical school series and this is the second part of the series which is talking all things UCAT so the UCAT is also known as the UK CAT but I'm going to refer to it as the UCAT in this video because it just rolls off the tongue a little bit easier. There's so many videos out there talking about how to get 700 in quantitative reasoning or how to get 800 in verbal reasoning yes aim to do well but Nobody actually talks about what do you actually do if you don't do as well as you'd hoped. So this video is going to be talking about what to do if you don't get the score you need, giving you a bit of an introduction to actually what the UCAT is, what it involves and how medical schools use it. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So I have an applying to medical school formula, which I have mentioned in other videos. That formula is grades plus UCAT score plus personal statement, plus work experience, plus interview, plus a little bit of luck equals success. So what actually is the UCAT? So the UCAT is an admissions test in the UK that you need to apply to medical school or dentistry. So the UCAT is made up of five subsections. You've got verbal reasoning, decision making, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning and situational judgment and each subsection involves something slightly different so the actual questions in the UCAT are pretty straightforward and not too difficult it's the time constraints that you have that make the UCAT and make that test so difficult depending on which section you're on it could be as little as 20 seconds you have to work out that question and that is what the difficult part of the UCAT is. So verbal reasoning is basically a comprehension text. It usually involves a 300 to 400 word passage that you have to be able to scan, understand and use to come to a valid conclusion in order to answer the question. Sounds pretty easy but you have 44 questions in 21 minutes to answer, which roughly leaves you with about 40 seconds per question. The questions in this section are presented in various ways. You are given the question and you have four answers. You have to choose the correct one, or you have true, false, can't tell answers and you have to choose the correct one. The second subsection is decision making. And this is basically a problem solving question. This information is presented to you and you have to come to a logical conclusion and obviously choose the right answer. You have 29 questions in 31 minutes, which leaves you with roughly 64 seconds per question. The questions in this section can be presented to you in a form of you are given four answers and you have to choose the correct one or yes or no answers to the statement you're given. The third section is quantitative reasoning and this is basically a numeracy test. So you're given 36 questions which you have to answer in 25 minutes which leaves you with roughly 40 seconds per question and the questions in this section are presented with five answers and you have to choose the correct one. The fourth subsection is abstract reasoning. So in this section you're given two sets of shapes and you have to be able to identify what the pattern is between these two sets, what the relationship is between these two sets of shapes. In this subsection you should expect 50 questions in 12 minutes which leaves you with roughly 20 seconds per question. These questions can be asked in a form of two sets and then a shape and you have to identify which set that shape belongs to or choosing the next shape in a sequence. The last subsection of this test is the situational judgment test and you can expect to have plenty of these throughout your medical school career but you're basically presented with a clinical hypothetical problem or scenario and you have to identify what the most appropriate response is. You can expect 69 questions in 26 minutes which leaves you with roughly 22 seconds per question. These questions can be presented in the form of rating the most appropriate response or rating a series of actions from most appropriate to least appropriate. So what is classed as a good score that will get you into medical school? So there is not one set good score that you're going to be able to get into medical school with. 
it actually is calculated off the average for the year and you are put into percentiles on whether you've overachieved or underachieved. It is dependent on the year that you're sitting it and how well or bad your cohort do. For example, in 2018, the average score was 2,485. In 2019, the average score was 2,483. In 2020, the average score was 2,511. In 2021, the average score was 2,499 and last year 2022 the average score was 2500 so as you can see the score does vary across the years how well you do is dependent on how well the cohort does and where you fit on the average so different universities use this score differently so some universities have a minimum threshold score which is dependent on the year and the average as i said and if you don't meet this minimum threshold they don't look at any more of your application some universities have the UCAT involved in the whole application and they look at your application as a whole, like your personal statement, your UCAT, the work experience you've got, they look at it as a whole. Some universities don't really use the UCAT and use other aspects like personal statement or work experience. So it is so individual to each university. That's why it's really important to apply based on your strengths. You need to be strategic. If you've got a good UCAT score, apply to universities that weight the UCAT really highly and that base the application mainly on the UCAT. Whereas if you have a lower UCAT score like me, you need to apply to universities that don't weight the UCAT score very highly and weight other things like your work experience or your personal statement. So how did I find the UCAT and what scores did I get? So if I'm being completely honest and this is completely transparent, I actually found the UCAT really hard. I say it's the part of the application process that I struggle with most. I actually sat the UCAT two years in a row. The first year I sat it, I got 2,450 and the average that year was 2,499. So I got below average that year. The second year I sat the UCAT, I got 2,550 and the average was 2,500. So I did get slightly above average that year. So even though I got slightly above average, I did apply to one university that did have a minimum threshold on the UCAT and that's purely because I didn't realise and I still didn't meet their minimum threshold. Even though I got above average for the whole year, I didn't meet the minimum threshold for some universities. So that's why it's really important to look at your strengths. As I keep rambling on about, just because I struggle doesn't mean you're going to struggle. So don't let this scare you at all. Everyone just has different strengths. Like I'm good at talking. So when it came to the interview, I was really good at that section. And some people might not be as good at that section. It is just very individual and it's just based off your strengths and the UCAT just was not my strength. The score you get in the UCAT does not dictate how well you're going to do in medical school or how good of a doctor you're going to be. I got below average in one of my UCAT scores and I got above average in my first year medical school results. So this isn't a tell on how good you're going to do in medical school or how good of a doctor you're going to be. It's literally just one part of the application process and if you can apply strategically you'll get into medical school regardless of what you get in the UCAT. So how do you get into medical school with a low UCAT score? So I've touched on this a little bit within the video, but it is just based on applying strategically. At any point in the application, if there's something that you struggle with more or something that you're not as good at, you need to look at the universities, look at what they want and look at if you're a good fit. So if you've got a low UCAT score, look at all the universities that look at other parts of the application and weight them more highly and apply to those universities. Some universities like you to have loads of work experience, some universities really look at your personal statement. So apply to those universities instead of applying to a university that looks at the UCAT and has a minimum cut off because there's no point applying to a university that has a minimum cut off that you can't reach and they're not going to be able to look at the rest of your amazing application where you've got loads to give. As I said, just because you have a low UCAT score does not mean that you're not going to get into medical school. I didn't have the highest UCAT score and I still got a place. So moving on from that, 
how do you actually study for the UCAT? So my advice to you is to start as early as possible. A lot of people say it's manageable in two weeks, but for me, I just personally don't think that works. You're not learning information, you're practicing your skills and building on your skills. And I just don't think you can build on skills through cramming. It's purely through practice and little and often. It's better to practice these skills and build on these skills over a longer period of time than just cram it over two weeks in my opinion that just wouldn't work for me if this is a test that you are naturally a little bit better at that's great use that to your advantage and work on aspects of the application process that you may be a little bit worse at but if you're going to struggle with this UCAT put more time into it start earlier and use the time that you have to be practicing and building on the skills because it's building on skills not cramming information. So there's a three step process to studying for the UCAT. So the first step, step one, prepare. This is probably something that you've never done before. So you need to look into the subsections, what they involve, the skills they are testing and the best strategies that you need to take to tackle them. There's loads of advice out there on the best strategies to use to actually build these skills. Like verbal reasoning is completely different to decision making. So you would tackle each subsection differently. Some really good resources out there, books, websites, videos, use them. I use PassMed, which has a lot of free UCAT questions on there. I also use MedEntry, which I think I had to pay for, but it wasn't too much. I can't remember how much it was now, Not it was quite a while ago. I know that Medify is good, and the UCAT website also has practice questions as well that you can use. I really don't recommend buying these £300 crash courses for UCAT because it's really not worth it. I know you go to desperate measures when you really want something and I've been there before, but it is a waste of money because there's cheaper resources or even free resources out there that you can use that work just as good. And it is about just putting the hours in and practicing and not having somebody tell you what to do because you can't tell somebody how to build a skill. Like You just have to practice and learn it yourself. Step two is apply and step two is going to be applying all this knowledge and all these strategies that you've just learned about each subsection and you're going to be applying it. You're going to be doing this with no time limit on the questions. No time limit means no stress. You're just getting used to the questions, familiarising yourself with them and just getting comfortable with applying these strategies that you've just learned. The last step is step three, which is practice. Now you're just gonna practice, practice, practice on applying these strategies, but you're gonna do it under the time limit and under test conditions for each subsection. You want to practice doing these questions under time constraints and under the same time pressures that you're gonna be in when you're in the exam. You don't only have to get the answer right, you have to get the answer right in the short space of time to get the mark. So you're gonna be practicing these skills in the time conditions that you're gonna be in when you're in the exam and just getting comfortable and practice makes perfect essentially. As I said at the start of this video, the most difficult part of this exam is how tightly timed it is. So you need to be practicing getting these timings right. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's helped and I hope it's given you some inspiration that if you are struggling with this, it doesn't mean you're not gonna be able to get into medical school because it's the part I struggled with the most and it was definitely my weakest aspect of the application process as a whole. So it's not impossible. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really love it if you would like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the best in your upcoming application. So I'm gonna go. Bye.